So the other day I went into the market and I did something I don't normally do. I went into the middle aisles, I looked at the boxes, and I started reading labels because so many people tell me that they're so confused about what's freaking in their food and in reality it's much much easier and much less complicated. Now there was one ingredient I kept seeing over and over and over again and that was hydrogenated oils. So what are these hydrogenated oils? Are they good for you and should you be eating them? What's up everyone, Alex Hein here over at ModernHealthMonk.com. So I'm going to give you here today our five research-backed reasons why you should absolutely not be eating hydrogenated oils, as well as what they actually do to you. And again, a big one is margarine. This, you're going to learn today why margarine is so much worse for you than butter is. So in the first study here, people over the age of 50 were get, given and fed one of four diets, okay? One, two, three, four. The first was a hydrogenated soybean oil diet. So it was the whole diet was not hydrogenated oil, but hydrogenated soybean oil was added and then compared versus three other non-hydrogenated oils, okay, for 35 days. Now, two oils and only two oils of those four increased the LDL, the bad cholesterol. Those were palm and partially hydrogenated soybean oil. So there's number one. Now, the second study found that all hydrogenated vegetable oils actually increased the inflammation and the calcification, so the hardening of arterial walls. So this is a known risk factor for heart disease and, and really any kind of cardiovascular event. In other words, it's bad for your heart. Now the third study was done down south in the southern United States, and they wanted to see if there was a link between what the people ate, in other words, their actual trans fat consumption, and if there was a positive correlation, so a relationship, a positive link between their colorectal cancer risk. So what the researchers found was that the colorectal cancer risk actually increased linearly, so there was a positive correlation, so it increased as trans fat consumption increased. So the more trans fats they added, the higher the risk of colorectal cancer. Again, this was for whatever reason in white people, not necessarily in African Americans. Now, this is a correlation, it doesn't necessarily prove anything. Maybe they also ate some other kind of crappy food that also increased colon cancer risk, but there's a little bit of a correlation there. Now in the fourth study, rats were actually fed certain different types of chow, and check out the results that happened. Check out the negative results that happened, the consequences of them having trans fats in their diet. So male rats were get a chow of high fat containing varying levels of trans fatty acids. So they were either less than 1%, less than 2%, or greater than 2% of the total fat, either as fresh soybean oil, oxidized soybean, or margarine for four weeks. Now the results of this experiment were that the rats that had the high fat diets, so their, their blood profiles changed dramatically. Now listen here, the rats that had the highest levels of the trans fatty acids significantly increased their tri triglyceride levels, bad. Total cholesterol, bad. Their LDL cholesterol, bad. And so many other markers, poor bad markers of heart health. Now this is kind of crazy, this is actually scary. Margarine of all the trans fatty acids they tested, margarine was by far the worst and had over doubled the incidence of all these negative coronary events. So margarine was the worst. The trans fatty acids in margarine were the absolute worst. Now in the final and fifth study, a big meta-analysis of various different studies on trans fatty acids found that for every 2% increase in consumption of trans fatty acids, there was a dramatic 20, 30, 40, 50% increase in cardiovascular events and cardiovascular risk. So, so let me just put this in perspective. For every 2% more trans fatty acids you consume, these trans fats, your risk of death, so this is the risk of heart attack or death. This is not just like, my heart's getting a little worse. This is myocardial infarction or death. Increased between 20 and 35% for every 2% increase in these trans fatty acids. So really today, there is no tiny habit. The only tiny habit takeaway for you is to eliminate trans fats and hydrogenated oils and all this kind of stuff as quickly as possible. Now you might be asking, okay, how do I avoid this stuff if it's everywhere? Well, in reality, it's not everywhere, and it's really only found in boxed things. This is another reason why my main food philosophy with my clients is just eat real food. If you just eat real food, there are no trans fats in real food. So I hope that helps. Make sure you stop by, leave a comment below. If you're on YouTube, go on over to modernhealthmonk.com. I've got a real food habits weight loss guide for you there. And subscribe on YouTube. You'll get the next video when it's out. And again, if you have something you want to learn about, tell me. 
go on over to modernhealthmonk.com, leave a comment or shoot me an email and, uh, and I'll see you next time.